We are in chapter four. We're going to be talking about hypothesis testing and how to infer a conclusion about a population parameter based on test data that we generate from a sample. So this is called hypothesis testing and statistical inference. So we're going to learn how to set up a hypothesis test, which is critical, because if it's not set up properly, then all the remaining steps will be incorrect. Uh, we will learn that we need to read the problem carefully, because that's how we're going to set it up correctly. After that, we determine what's called the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. We will next determine the type of test we're going to conduct. Uh, we will establish test decision criteria and then reach a conclusion. So to practice how to set up a hypothesis test, let's look at these. I took these out of the textbook. It says here that the director of human sources, um, uh, resources compiled data on about 70 former employees um, and a reporter has claimed that the average tenure is no more than two years. And so you need to look at just about every sentence in a, a hypothesis test problem to get it right. So we always want to know what is being stated or what is being claimed. And here the reporter claims that the average tenure, that's the population average tenure, mu for population mean or average, is no more than two years. That means it's less than or equal to two years. That's the claim that the reporter makes. And you see how I converted these English words to our hypothesis testing uh, language, mu less than equal to two. Now, we also, that is the claim. And because you notice this contains the equal sign, this is going to be called H sub O, see the, how I write it, which is the null hypothesis. We also have to have an alternate hypothesis, which is H sub A. Some books call it H sub 1. And that's going to contain all other possibilities. Well, if the null says that the mean tenure is no more than 2, then the alternate must be that the mean tenure is greater than 2 years. So that's how you set up the hypothesis test. And so you see how critical this is. It's critical because H sub A is going to determine what kind of a test we have. We always are going to end up by either rejecting H sub O or not rejecting H sub O. That's going to be our ultimate decision. And uh, we say here alpha is equal to 0.05. That is a 5% significance level. That's the risk that we take, that we're going to reach a decision to reject H sub O when, in fact, it is true. So there's a lot in hypothesis testing. First thing I want to do is make sure you know how to set it up. And so you do that by reading the the problem. Now also here it says 70 former employees. Well, that's the test data. This test in the sample is going to be 70. We'll cover that later. Uh, right now all I want you to do is learn how to formulate the hypothesis with H sub O and H sub A. Remember the null always contains the equal sign and we determine the type of test by H sub A. Here you notice the inequality points to the right. So what we're going to do when we end up drawing a hypothesis test with the bell-shaped curve here, our rejection criteria will be in the right tail. 
In other words, this is alpha, 0.0500, the shaded area. If our test data ends up in that tail, we're going to reject H sub O. If it ends up elsewhere, we're going to reach, in here someplace, we're going to reach a decision not to reject H sub O. So that's one problem. Let's go to another one. Here, Ohio Department of Education has mandated ninth grade proficiency tests. Um, test the null hypothesis that the average score, average score, so we're talking about, we're talking about mu, is equal to the state average, equal to, I'll say, um, uh, mu sub c, the Cincinnati average is equal to the um, state average. Okay, that's what that statement says. You notice it contains the equal sign, therefore it's h sub o. The alternate is h sub a, and if the Cincinnati average is not equal to the state average, then the alternate must be that the Cincinnati uh, average, mu sub c, must not be equal to the state average. It's either higher or lower. And this is a hypothesis test. Remember, um, this is the claim. We always need to put down what the claim is because we're going to end up either believing the claim or not. Uh, whenever you see the null having an equal sign and the alternate having a not equal sign, that means we have a two-tail test and there's rejection regions in both the left and the right tails. Notice here alpha is equal to 0.01. And so in this case, if alpha is equal to 0.01, half of it has to be in the left tail, and half of it has to be in the right tail. This would be do not reject H sub O, but if our test data falls in either one of the tails, then we would reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we would not believe the claim. Next, here's another example. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, it says, uh, do uh, top liberal art colleges or research universities in the sample um, exceed 90%? Okay. Do the data support a conclusion that the graduation rate exceeds 90 or 85%? There's a couple of them here. Well, this is a proportion. 90% means proportion. And so the statement says that the proportion exceed 0.90. That's the claim. That's, what is that? That's got to be H sub A because it does not contain the equal sign. H sub O is all other conditions. So it means a proportion uh, who, uh, the graduation rate, uh, or a proportion of people who graduate is going to be less than or equal to 0.90. So that's that's important. Here's H sub O. There's the null. That's what we're going to end up rejecting or not rejecting. Notice that the inequality in the alternate hypothesis points to the right. So once again here, we're going to have a right tail test. Um, again, they say... Would your conclusion change if the level of significance are 0, 01 or 0, 05? Well, whatever it is, if it's 0, 01, that this is going to be 0. 0.0100. Oh, this is going to be the reject H sub O 
area, and this is going to be the do not reject area. So the purpose here is to just make sure that you know how to set up the hypothesis test. Now here's one we're going to do. The publication states that the average profit was at least 4,500. So we're going to write that down as the average profit mu at least means greater than or equal to 4,500. That is the claim that's made. That's got to be H sub O because it contains the equal sign. H sub A is mu less than uh, 4,500. We're able to determine that this is a left tail test because you notice H sub A, the inequality sign, points to the left. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw our distribution. And by the way, this is a T distribution. It looks like the bell-shaped curve. You notice it's a little flatter. But the reason we use the T distribution here is because we do not know the population standard deviation, which is usually the case. Since we have a left tail test, our rejection region is going to be in the left tail, and we know the percentage of the data is going to be 0 0.0500 because our alpha is 0 0.05. What that's going to do is generate a critical value of T. And the reason that's called a critical value of T is because what we're going to do, we're going to test, uh, take test data and calculate the T from the test statistic. Uh, or from the test data. And this statistic is either going to fall in here or it's going to fall in here. Again, if it falls in the shaded area, we reach a decision to reject H sub O. If it falls in the non-shaded region, we do not reject H sub O. That means we would believe the claim. If we do not reject the null hypothesis, that means we believe the claim. So what we're going to do here, um, in, we're going to do an example, and this example involves the sales data uh, that is in doc sharing, the whole series of uh, data banks that we have. And what they wanted to know was, go back, uh, here it is, what they wanted to know was the about the average profit per customer. Okay, average profit per customer. I erased that. Uh, but if you recall what it was, it was a left tail test. And this was 0 0.0500 right down in here. I'm going to draw it again in a second. And so we did H sub O and H sub A. And so let's continue on. We're going to go to that data because we have to generate test data. And so we're going to our data. And what we need to know, here's the, here's the profit. What we need to know is using data analysis, using our data analysis tool in uh, Excel, we want the mean and the standard deviation of this test data. We have, I think, 60 here. So by doing that, here's data analysis right up here, you notice. What we're going to do is uh, indicate our input range, which in this case is column D. I shaded it. It, it shows up over here. We want um, summary statistics. You notice we can calculate the confidence level if we wanted to, but we want the summary statistics. When we do that, what we end up with are these sample data. In other words, our X bar sample mean is 4239.16. It's right here. Our standard deviation is 5811.73. And we have 60 pieces of data. So that is from the data. 
That is from the data. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate a t from this data. This is one way of doing it. By taking x minus mu divided by s over the square root of n. And this is going to be the test statistic that we're going to compare. If you recall, we had a left tail test and this was 0 0.0500. That generated a critical value of t, which we could get from the tables. And that critical value uh, of t was would be minus 1.67. We could get that from tables, but we really don't have to in this class. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to calculate t based on this data right here. It's going to be 4239.16 minus the mean, which is 45. Hundred. That was it. That was uh, the mean value is always the h sub o value, and then we're going to divide it by s, which is fifty eight eleven point seven three over the square root of sixty. So if you do that, you're going to come up with a t value equal to uh, minus point three four seven eight. You can try that yourself. Now, what you do is you, f you ask yourself, where does that fall here? Well, minus 3.478 falls in here someplace, minus 0 0.3. Here's the mean, which has a t of 0. So minus 3 is here. You notice it is in the do not reject h sub o area. Now, that's how you do it manually. As I said, we're not going to do it that way. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go into pH stat, down to one sample test, and we'll do a t-test for the mean, because we're talking about averages here. When we do that, this is the table that pH stat gives us. It wants to know the null hypothesis value, 4,500, the level of significance, that's alpha, 0.05. And then it asks, what are your sample statistics? Well, from the sample size was 60. Remember the mean we got from Excel descriptive statistics, 4,239.16. Sample standard deviation we put there, and they want to know what kind of a test that you have. Remember, we had a left tail test. Here it's called lower tail, so we have to X that out. Hit OK, and once we hit OK, then our output says, first of all, it says do not reject the null hypothesis, which I said. It gives you the lower critical value, the T star based on the alpha, that's the decision criteria, and the test statistic from the data that you calculate, minus 0.3477. And all that leads to a do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, it also gives you the p-value. And the p-value says around it, there's about a 36% chance that our test statistic would be smaller than the critical value. So the criteria to use is whenever the p-value is less than alpha, then you reject h sub o. Remember our alpha was 0 0.05. Well, our, our um, p-value is 0.36, so it's not less than alpha obviously, so we're not going to reject H sub O. So we reach the same decision a couple of different ways. This will take some work. Uh, I hope you understand this. If you don't, email me and we'll straighten it out.